Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I guess it is noon. So it depends on where you it are. Depends on Here. all you West Coasters. Good morning. You're having breakfast. We're ready for lunch. Yeah, we are taco belling today and going to the park. It's gonna be good. Um, it's a beautiful spring day. Um, welcome. We are Studio R12 Stencils, and we are here to answer your DIY and painting questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And welcome. And we're, we're really fun. You. Yeah. Well, we're happy you can see us, I guess. We're we we are you. happy you can see us and hear us. And I mean, I can see your comments. The comments are the most important thing, you guys. Um, we do this because of you. We want to help you become better painters, better crafters, better DIYers. And so that's what we're here for on Tuesdays, answer questions. So ask away. And um, if you saw us cracking up before we went live, we were talking about everything on planet Earth. <laughs> Garden and everything but painting. noses. And oh, it was funny. It was like you should be a fly on the wall sometimes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so we do a lot of fun stuff here. We a do. lot, a lot, a lot of fun stuff. You can follow us all kinds of places on the internet, starting with studior12.com. Mm -hmm. That is our website. We have thousands, literally thousands of designs on our website that come in. Most of them come in several different sizes. So our product today that we're releasing, we have eight new products, five sizes. So technically we released 40 new products for you guys this week, which yeah. is a lot. You guys, wait till you see. Yes. Oh, my lanta. Speaking of seeing, um, if you're on our newsletter, then you have already ah. seen our new products. This is May 23rd, 2023. If you are not signed up for the newsletter yet, as soon as this is over, go sign up. Yeah. Tomorrow is our What to Paint Wednesday. We give you tips on what is popular right now, what's trending, what you should be painting ahead of season. And tomorrow we're releasing our um, summer 2023 colors you guys, that we so recommend you paint with. So fun colors. You'll want to have that um, information just, if nothing else, to um, file it away. Even if you don't use it right away, you're mm -hmm. gonna be like, oh, that color plus that color, I never saw that coming. I literally found some colors like that and I was just like, this is the most playful and fun thing yeah. I've seen in a long time. There's a lot of fresh stuff happening out there mm -hmm. and you guys need to know. Yep, and so we scoured um, the internet, we mm -hmm. are, um, because we have a boutique, we have all the upcoming mm -hmm. trends come through our catalogs and all of the information from all the vendors that we buy from for yeah. our boutique um, as well. So we are informed. We head out to market in July, July. and then we will come back with a whole fistful of new a whole, things. A whole new things for you guys. Yeah, so if you want to be in the know, um, mm -hmm. if you want to be like on the cutting edge and know all the things here um, and all the things that you know, um, then make sure that you subscribe and ring that bell if you want to be notified as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And we are on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we are newly on Twitch where you can get on and watch live streams of all kinds of things at all the times. Um, some girl was studying. Some girl was studying. <laughs> she had 9,000 viewers and all she was doing was studying. So we got to get people on Twitch. Sitting there quietly studying. She was in quiet time for 17 minutes. Yeah, and we, was like, okay. we are so fun. Yeah. Um, so on YouTube, we are live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. But then on Saturdays, we also release new videos. So we last week released the garden markers, which we showed how to paint them how not to and how to use you guys, a marker if you on them. You didn't see that. Um, it was so cool. They went out to Carrie's garden mm -hmm. and there's a whole body of us garden people in this company. And um, we're all about hard to keep our minds just set on like painting. We're all talking about, <gasps> look oh at the my pictures. God. We look were at Carrie pictures. Underwood's garden earlier. We were, <laughs> Carrie crazy. Underwood has a garden that is impressive. It's very impressive, yeah, but it looks real. You know what I mean? I would have expected it to be a little princessy and yeah, it looked super it real, look real. And I was I was impressed by that, yeah. actually. Check it out. Um, just a Google search, right? Um, it was on YouTube, yeah. Yeah, YouTube search. Okay, anyway, so who wants to see what's new? Yeah, well, wait one second. Okay. I do have one thing to share with our garden. Mm -hmm. So... Um, oh, we cats. we have a couple different gardens. Well, you will see my cats if you if you Her watch the video. And my cats are super cute and they love the garden. Um, but in 
Um, most of the people who are gardening here, we do a couple different gardens where we do raised beds, or we also do the tower gardens, which are vertical. And we use the Green Stock brand. So we reached out to Green Stock and asked for a coupon for our stencil fans in case you're wanting to garden. And so we have a link that you can click. And if you yeah. decide to buy a green stock from our link, you will get $10 off your order of $75. Yeah, you guys, the green stock. So just, just an aside, um, if you garden at all, and or if you garden and you don't like the back breaking, bendy mm -hmm. over thing, um, like literally we can't stay on topic because of gardens right now. Um, it is spring fever and we've got it bad. But um, the green stock is 30 pockets of five foot tall that you water from the top and there's there's no fuss no muss my carrots like they 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 bloomed in not bloomed but they started um sprouted in like six days you know where normally it would take weeks yeah and it's just amazing they're amazing little things just check them out yeah super cool it's super amazing and we're all in love with ours <laughs> yeah well, like, use the link you, yeah use the you link if you money. want to save money yeah yeah um and then this weekend, we are going to show you an additional piece of today. So we are going to build on today and show you actually the entire reason that we made all of these new products. Was because of that. Because yeah. of that. And yeah. we're not showing it to you today. We want to save it for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we do have a long history. So um, before I go and grab the pile, that is sitting over there because it is a wood product that we're introducing today that will enhance your painted projects. Um, but way back in the day when we very first started making stencils and very first started making um, wood bits, we didn't own a laser and we didn't own any of this equipment and we were in an office building basically. And um, when our first corners came in, they were swirly, um, Halloween corners because it was that season and snowflake corners and um, when we got them the swirly ones looked like little pew pew guns and so it was like pew pew you know so it's just a fun little backstory about where we started with this and here we are probably 10 years later and now wait till you see and on that segue I'm gonna see you later she's not going there. too far away let us know in the comments, what are you guys painting today? We like to give stuff away. We have, um, Patty's bringing over a pile. I'm bring, I have a pile. Bring your pile. Ta-da, mm -hmm. da, -da, da da Whoa. Okay, this is what we have created for you. Um, and this is for you. Um, this is not for us. I mean, it's for us as well, but um, it is for our customers. This is for you guys. And these are corners and they come in a bunch of sizes and two thicknesses and so let me segregate this out it's eight styles and these are simpler than the snowflake ones and things like that this one actually has a little fleur-de-lis in it find the little guy oh I'm gonna make a mess today so that's what they look like thin and little okay so but they are for the corners of your projects and then they go really big so you could actually embellish like your house if you wanted to. You could paint that, put it over and around a door, window, whatever. You could totally do what, whatever furniture with this. Um, they would be amazing on dressers and things like that. So thin has a low profile. The thicker has a lot of substance to it. And then these are just the examples of, this is one of each of all the sizes one of each is that amazing yes, so we have five different sizes we already have had a question how do you determine what size to use um, we're going to show you some different examples of yeah. using all of the sizes the sizes range from three five seven nine and eleven inches so that's really going to be determined by the size surface you are mm -hmm. using and the your white stencil. space and yeah. your art that you want to use if you paint a 12 inch surface with a monogram R in the middle, you would potentially use the 11 inches that, yeah. you, that you could corner frame mm -hmm. or you could put the teeny tiny ones and just carrot. So we're gonna show you all of Yeah, your vocabulary for word for the day is gonna be white space. I think that's a really good, yeah. um, and we're gonna start with, I'm gonna start with this first one and I'm gonna tell you why I'm starting with that one, but I'm gonna put this pile away. Um, isn't that an impressive amount of these? Well, and technically that's not all of them, because we pulled from that pile to Ooh, paint today. I see. Okay. So we pulled. Um, we we piled we pulled. and piled. We we pulled and piled. 
that pile was all on my desk yesterday and I have a rather large <laughs> she has table, a large desk yeah um, yes. and it was packed all right so what we're gonna do today is we are gonna take existing so everything that we paint on the YouTube channel I think everything mostly everything um, goes on a couple of shelving racks in the um, in our prep alley um, it's a big wide space that we have ta painting tables and stuff like that um, and we have shelving there for storage and so we organize them by themes and whatever and so we can pull them back out and show you guys some of these are some of our best sellers these will be YouTube videos that you can go find which is kind of cool okay so the very first one we're going to talk about is this coffee one that Carrie painted and this was a really cool lesson because she took a brick stencil and she um used a texture paste through the brick stencil and that did it all over the thing and then used the circle stencil and created a base coat and then your stencil on top of that mm -hmm. correct yep. yeah so um anyway so there's a lot of cool lessons and that's what we love to do so for your use um when you're painting you're going to want to take different things out of your toolbox and the the stucco through the stencil is a toolbox tool um, basing with a circle stencil toolbox tool and then basing on top of that now we're going to take it one step further and we're going to do corners so i'm going to put this down flat and so you wouldn't think that this would be a good candidate for um, these embellishments but so we chose this very simple embellishment i don't know what any of these are actually called yeah i can tell you when we are pulling them up that yeah. one is called the circle arch circle arch which i love that because it is definitely arch and definitely has a circle feature well and we kind of made names for them yesterday when we were picking and choosing and i was really proud of myself because a lot of them we had the right name like that's we cool. we were like oh this looks like a clover and that's actually what the name is so go um, us go name protocols okay so when you put this size um on here so we've got this amount of white space when we put this on there you notice that that just really enhances that circle shape so as I build it out now there's texture behind here so or texture on here so we want to make sure about how we're gonna glue things down I've got a couple things to say about that so look at how that absolutely embellishes without robbing from the detail like you still have your texture, you still have your brick, you still have all of that. And I want to hear what you guys think. Love, hate, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, you know, any of the comments, I want to hear about it because I think this is such an intriguing thing. I also love when we did this, it has this like natural little um, V's mm -hmm. that it creates. So it creates an additional pattern. And when I painted these, I'm going to show you how to paint these. Um, when I painted these, I left the burn of the laser as its side edges. And so you need to know how to paint these so that you keep a clean edge. And so anyway, but that is just a wonderful look. I love it. Where we struggled. So when you're choosing this, you want to choose your, you want to watch the side lengths. So for instance, if I swapped these, then the long ends come in and they actually still worked. I can't swap them because I have to flip them over. That's why. Okay. So now this makes other stuff. This makes these two long ends can't butt mm -hmm. together. So what you have to do is you have to take in consideration. Um, and this is what I was doing yesterday. I was like, ah, which way does this go? So we had to make it fit, but it does fit. We just had to take into consideration the two measurements because they're not the same measurements. They are, one side is longer on every one of these mm -hmm. and it's to help carry and frame. If you only cup your corner, then it's okay. But when you drag a little bit of an embellishment down the edge, it makes it much nicer and much more elegant and good designy trick. Um, when you're painting flowers, spill some over the edge of the pot and it yeah. will be much prettier. Um, if you look at Carrie's hair today, she's got a little bit of stuff hanging down on each side of her face. One's heavier than the other. Mm -hmm. That is a very elegant design feature. It's something that you want to go for. Thank okay. you for teaching me that. I do have a couple comments. So you were asking if people loved them. Sue Braun says, I love how it enhances the circle shape. Janice said, beautiful. Anita said, love it. Love it. 
Um, Anita, you Cinda, and I are on the same page. Cinda said, that looks so cool. Love it. Rhonda says, love the look. Um, Cindy says, looks much richer with mm -hmm. the corner pieces. Really Esther does. said, really enhances the project and makes it pop. And to be honest, I would have never thought we could have done more on that project mm -hmm. too. No, because, I the same. Yeah. Because it's already a lot. Yeah. Because we have the texture it and then the layer. It anchors the, the texture. Yeah. So let's pull it back away, right? Let's take all of that off. It looks a little lonely now. I know. And it's like, I mean, it's good, it's good, but I like it. I like, do too. That just gives it a hug. So for years, um, we have been using um, MDF boards. And MDF, for those of you who know MDF of the past, um, MDF of the past used to be super um, toxic and horrible kind of thing. And I never used MDF then. Um, since we moved into lasers and that, we have moved into MDF products and they have become actually green products. They're using non-formaldehyde, they're using non-everything, like all the things are so much better and they're a recycled product as well. So because they're using all of the dust pulp stuff from the wood industry, yeah. it goes in and it gets pressed with the nice glues and stuff like that. So we've used blank boards for a lot of years and everybody's been where are the frames? You know, I don't, but I don't want to rip lumber. I don't want to get molded frames. It's been a more simple time. We haven't needed, um, you know, Tuscan went that way. And now we're in this farmhouse and we're in this modern look and some of that kind of stuff. So I want something that's a little bit different. And so now we can have some frames. Okay. So I have two questions. Yeah. The first one I can answer. Cindy asked, are they made from NDF? MDF, yes. These, well, I, one is made out of MDF and the other is made out of masonite. Okay. So. And then they are um, different thicknesses. So mm -hmm. the two smaller sizes are eighth inch. Mm -hmm. They are thinner. And then the three larger sizes are quarter inch. And they are they those are MDF and then mm -hmm. the little thinner ones are masonite. Okay. <laughs> and then... Um, we had a question from Patty. Can you take those four off? Can you grab the four tiny black ones and show yes. what the tiny would look like? So this is just going to show. Now this is a different color. doesn't really go with the project. It could, we'll see. But it does show you what a smaller size and scale. size would yeah. look like. And so, even a different design that yeah. is a little fancier. Yeah. I, it's fancier, but, and then you could, if you flip it over, you can see a different color. Mm -hmm. And then you can go um, up with your skinny end, up with your skinny end. Just don't repeat that. And you could make it a different look that kind of makes it a little bit more subtle. You could use your blue. I was gonna get these based in the blue on the back and stuff like that. When you paint both sides of your surfaces, it interferes with the gluing. So I chose not to do that. But um, yes, you could do that. And then if we wanted to I don't have other good examples. Um, here's a medium size in another color, so ignore the colors. I've got a lesson here for this. Mm, that's something we didn't talk about. Let's go, I'm gonna go this way instead. You can go with just two and you can give that mm -hmm. hint. That's actually super nice looking. I love that and you could go the opposite way. And if you wanted to, you could anchor with one. You know, so there there are no rules to this. Um, we've done the balance work, we've done the design work, we've done all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you can pick and choose any of the different designs. There's so many of them, and the sizes make them different. So this in oh, this is this one. So this in this size is an entirely different beast than this in this size. This is busy. This is kind of simple, you know, because of size and scale. So. It even matters when you get into large sizes and stuff like that. This is this guy, you know, so when you make it into another size, it just changes everything. Ooh, you could do metal on there. Mm -hmm. That looks really cool. Wow. That the ideas are absolutely mm -hmm. endless. You could do yeah, so really much. Funny. You could do a silver, you could do you could uh, rose gold rose mm -hmm. gold's like the the bomb right now right 
So you could do a rose gold right there on the corners. Um, so much. Mary Beth asks, what's the difference in MDF versus Masonite? I don't know. I think it's just a different pressing pattern. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I I'm don't not, I'm not gonna stumble anymore. along. Huh? They're very similar, I think. Masonite's kind of slicker. Slick, smooth yeah. on mm -hmm. one side. Yeah, and Mason, Masonite has been like, the. It, it, Masonite is the stuff like your, um, the, is it a clipboard? Yeah, old yeah. clipboards. Yeah, yeah, the old ones. And um, nowadays, who knows what they're made out of? I think they're cardboard from the Dollar Tree. Um, okay, so it is compressed the most, and it is similar to MDF, except that it is denser because it has been more highly compressed. Yeah. And MDF it's is very hard. Well, MDF is gently compressed. Okay. So. Yeah, and MDF has a little bit of a tooth to it. The um, Masonite um, does not have a tooth. It's a very smooth product. MDF has a little bit of a grip. So that's that. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to show you guys how to paint on one of these because I think that is extreme. Well, actually, I'm going to show you one more than I'm going to show you how to paint. <clears throat> Everybody give Steve a thumbs up because he has patiently been like, please get that tote off of the table. Get this out of my way. Get this out of the line of the camera. Give him a thumbs up for caring. Okay, so we have Mr. Tote. We love the tote. And we had the tote blank, and we were like, what should we do? And so we went and found a stencil that had a farm word, and we stenciled the, the sign on there, the farm word on there. And then we took our little thin um, ones of these, and we made them into little red accents and it's super super cute you guys if you go and look at the thumbnails the thumbnail is the product image alternates on mm -hmm. the website and elaine our one of our designers is a pro at this and so she goes through and she takes all of give her if you want to just send some emails <laughs> to our customer service and say please tell elaine she does a great job because she is so responsible for all the pretty things that you're seeing um, on the website when you're choosing things, it's because she did really good images. Anyway, so, um, but you can, oh, see, this is one of these examples. You wouldn't flip this because now this sticks up over the edge. And so that would not be attractive. Now, it would be easy enough to give that a mark and then take a little saw or a Dremel or something like that and cut it off, but then you can just flip them. You wanna pay attention to your lengths when you're planning your projects. Okay, I think that's super important. When you, painted the small ones, mm -hmm. so those that are the masonite, did you sand them first? I did not sand okay. them. Okay. Um, the paint um, is stuck. This is one coat of paint and no prep. And it, I'm scratching at it with my short fingers, which means that, not short, no, short fingers, as well as short fingernails, but there's no, nothing coming off. And that was, this is one of the, this is the last one that I painted this morning. So I did all the painting this morning um, and if it was going to come off, it would come off. So yeah, definitely the paint sticks. Paints and mediums are amazing these days. They really do a good job. Okay, so now let's talk about how you paint one of these. Let me grab one. I grabbed two of the same. One is thin and one is thick. Okay, so that's eighth inch and that's quarter inch. And if you can see here on the table, um, you can see that this is a very low profile, and then this is a much higher profile. This is really appropriate for your bigger signs, and it's um, things like your tall porch signs and stuff like that. The two things, I am so excited, because last week we said, go get um, jumbo daubers, and go get your ink sweepers, and then they were out. They're in! Yes, yes. They are in. Like, please get them while you can. Um, like, if you think you need them, go get them, is what I mean. Um, but it is impressive how helpful these are. Grab a couple of these. So what they are is this one is a jumbo dauber, and it fits on two of my fingers. And it has just a tightly compressed sponge, okay? And it's amazing because it does not mush out like a regular sponge would. Um, you don't squish out the edges of your sponginess. And if you notice, we have a little theme going in this company, and we might just be called the Dome Company.
but our stencil brushes, which are the absolute best stencil brush in the universe, are domed. That's why you don't bleed under when you use this kind of stencil brush. And then our applicators are also domed. And this is an ink sweeper, and you'll notice that it is also domed in all the directions. This is domed in all the directions. It works, it's amazing. So you need these applicators for a couple of reasons. Number one, you can use them to stencil with. Number two, you want them because they won't squoosh over your edge. So let's show you how to do this. Um, this has got a dark edge, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a white paint. Rhonda asked if these would be considered corbels. Um, yes, they're corbel, yeah, absolutely. Um, earlier when I was painting the yellow, um, I think I put out like two feet of yellow and mix them and put out little bits of paint, put out a nickel of your paint. Don't put out like eight feet. I, I totally threw away Rob, we're, an entire um, sheet of yellow. Talking color, can you give me some color numbers? Yeah, yeah, um, 27, 28, mm -hmm. 18, mm -hmm. 36, eight and 25. Thank I feel you. like those are lottery numbers. <laughs> Just kidding, JK. Okay, so we're gonna use the dome um, applicator, so the Jumbo Dauber, to do the large. And I found something interesting today when I was doing so many base coats. Um, I don't like offloading them onto this bounty paper towel. If I had a flat paper towel like a Scott or the blue Scott, mm -hmm. the white Scott or the blue Scott, um, if I had that, I wouldn't mind it. But when I offloaded it onto the paper towel, the pattern of the paper towel became evident on my base coat and I was like, hmm, that's lame. So watch over here. Can you see it okay, Steve? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna load in the middle. Okay. And what's up? Or, okay. So in the middle, so we wouldn't whoop, scoop it all up. And then I come over here right next to it and I just kind of tap it even so I end up like that. And it looks like something you might apply um, rouge on your cheek and then smear it around a little bit or something like that. It's very, very scant and there's no ridges over here. So then when I come on top, when I go over here on top of the here to paint, I'm tapping softly. I'm not pushing, I'm tapping, okay? Super important and don't hurry. That is one of the best things. Now watch when I do this ledge, can you see that little ridge right there? So when I go right next to it, I gotta get more paint on there, there's not enough. I just go ever so softly and then it will not moosh over the edge. And then I just go quickly, don't be in a hurry, I said, and then go quickly, don't listen to me, no, just kidding. Um, but you wanna, um, a thin coat will be dry by the time you get done with your four corners or your two corners and um, it will be easy to do your second coat. And so I'm just always, every application, if I'm using a dome brush, I offload on my paper towel. If I'm using an ink sweeper or a jumbo dauber, I am offloading right next to it on the palette. Okay, so we're just going to do soft coats. And then that keeps your edges nice and clean. If you make a mess and it happens, there's a couple of things you can do. You can, and so we'll let that dry. I'm gonna put that down right on top of that paint because that's gonna dry really fast. Earlier when I was busy talking about Carrie Underwood's garden, <laughs> Um, with Carrie. We do not stay focused. We do yeah. not. The garden is such a thing. Oh my gosh. Well, someone had messaged or someone commented earlier that they haven't been painting because they've been spending all of their time. It's that season. You know, it is that season. Okay, so this was put inside this plastic bag right on the bag and then it was cinched around. If you keep oxygen off of your paint, it won't oxidize and it won't dry. So, but then as soon as I am no longer using this, and if I get into a at the end of the day thing, this had better go into my bucket or it's gonna be ruined. And I have yet to discover, I haven't tried alcohol, I haven't tried the things that are toxic and all the really harsh things. It's better just to put them right in your water. And then Carrie discovered that if you take the back end of your dome brushes and you push them down in the water, they'll submerge in your water so none of the little edges float 
and do a thing. So that's how you're gonna care for these. Um, and we had a question about um, loading paint. Mm -hmm. Cindy asked, do you ever go to your offload area yes. to reload your paint? Right yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely do that. Um, when I offload onto the paper towel with the dome brush, if I need just a little bit more and I want that control, mm -hmm. I'll go and just wipe back on my wiped off area and reload. So yes, that is a perfect, perfect reason yeah. to do that. And the longer you use your paper towel, the more paint that's going to build up on it. So the, the longer, longer that... you use your dauber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you guys, that's, that's fact right there. When you keep loading and keep loading and keep loading, you're gonna find that sometimes you have to go get a paper towel and just give it a good shove. Yeah. And then you'll be ready to go again. You'll be back to kind of a neutral. But um, I have been using these and I, so cool. Um, trade shows used to be a big part of my life. Um, and I love them. And those of you who I met there, I am so happy that you're here. But um, such a big deal. I would have these buckets of tools that I would use and show. And over in our little alley of all of our get ready for things um, area, I have a bucket called sponges. And in that bucket, I was just looking at that today. I'm gonna put this one in water because I think it's done its job. And because I have a smaller bucket and then other things on top, I'm just gonna sink them with those brushes. Um, anyway, I opened that bucket of sponges up and inside there were these yellow gnarly, I feel like I wanna go grab those. Are you okay to- Sure. I'm just gonna go grab. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Patty's running off. Let's um, hear from you guys what kind of projects you would like to see the corners on. And when Patty was painting the one with the farm, I did want to show you and forgot to pull it out then. We weren't sure what we were going to do with the wagon wheel project. We knew we wanted it to be farm related. So what we did is we just went and grabbed from a bin of stencils some different farm things. So other ideas we could have used. This one has a bunch of different chickens on it. We could have used it to walk along the bottom. This one has a cow head and some rustic Americana stars that we could have used. And we almost used this, but we were set on using red for the wagon wheels. But how cute would this tractor have been? And then you could have done a green tractor and green wagon wheels and brought it all together if green is the tractor of your choice. I know. Um, <laughs> we are a Kubo uh, family. You're, you're gonna have a red, Woo! a green, a yellow, orange. orange. Yes. <laughs> okay, so these guys are in my bucket called sponges and these were from trade shows for sure because um, we, I had a studio, I have a studio, had a studio, it flooded, it, my husband got injured, we had to shut the whole thing down, all of this stuff stayed in these buckets. Trade shows stopped, um, then the buckets went from here to the other side of this building in a corner, and then they went back to the studio, and then they came back to here, but they've not been opened since all of that happened. So these are from years ago going, uh, which way? Keep them left. Okay, sorry. These are from years and years and years ago. I'm talking like eight years probably. Um, so a lot of stuff happened and this was used 30, 40, 50 times at different trade shows and just this bucket would travel with me. And you guys, they just, sorry, they last and last and last and it's amazing. They are great little things. I am so grateful to the scrapbooking world for introducing that product to the world because they are amazing. Okay, going into the little ones. I'm gonna switch tools. So we're gonna switch into the ink sweeper and because the ink sweeper is narrower, it has less pushy, less little squishy squishy going on. And so it makes it more controlled and it fits three of your fingers. But you can also use just the tip. So what's neat about that is when you need some control, you can get right on in there with just the tip. It's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna use our glasses because now we're into little stuff. And I notice I'm spending a little bit more time patting out. I wanna get an even load. And if I start seeing any ridgy stuff right there, I might go over here and just kind of get rid of it. 
So look how fast that makes this work. So you'll notice I'm just turning my hand as I'm basing. So I'm gonna go along, 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 and then as I'm doing this, I just kind of turn it with the thing. If I wanna get into one area, like say this little ring area right here, I can just use my tip and give it the perfect base coat. These make this, any of the 3D, we've got a whole bunch of those 3D signs that you put on your front door and stuff like that, the round door signs, which are still um, super popular. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's crazy. Um, I love when trends come, they go, mm -hmm. you know, nuts. Okay, so just go along, a couple coats, and you're done. It's amazing. So this is not done, it would need another coat. I don't wanna bore you, you already saw the second coat here, so we're gonna move along. I have more things to say, always. So I'll move these guys. And now let's go to this book. If you remember, this is a Dollar Tree little book and it is, what I love about this, this is really hard cardboard. And um, it's like almost like a masonite uh, cardboard. Got a good, um, strong little spine there and then just a really good paint surface. So if you were looking for a recipe book to give as a wedding gift to somebody, um, use the sheets, um, you know, the plastic sheets to put your pages in and stuff like that. You could totally paint this any way you wanted to. It took the paint brilliantly. It is one of our YouTube videos. And then we attached these corners. So we just gave it a nice funky, chunky look. And I think that just dressed it up. It just anchors it and makes it nice. Um, and I'm looking for this. So on this project, we gotta talk about the different glues and stuff like that. So on this project, we use the um, Super Glue Gel XL. Gotta say, I've not used this myself before today, okay? And um, this one is almost empty and we had been using it to fix some other things. Um, and Steve was saying that if you just apply a little pressure, then it starts drying and it instantly anchors. And we were floating these things around, trying to get them lined up just a little bit. It wasn't very fussy at all. But we were floating them around as soon as we went that thing was stuck and it was amazing. So I think this is a absolutely stand-up product. I'm impressed. So, yay. Okay, so gluing things. Um, I wanna backtrack just a second. We've had a lot of people um, asking to see them on different kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. um, after the live is over today, we have each design shown on three different kinds of projects um, mm -hmm. and they're all different so it's not the same three projects it's like Christmas over and, over. and farmhouse and yeah, yeah. Um, and so after we're done with the live today I'm going to share all eight of those pictures mm, on good. Facebook so you'll have 24 different design options I don't know that we painted we painted some similar things but nothing exactly like the examples that we gave yeah yeah, um, these we went and chose pre-done things. The things that were um, examples that we have on the website were things that were designed because of the corners. Um, so this was like, I have this art, what can I grab? And then that was, I have this corner, what will I paint? There's a couple ways you can go about that. But this has got a lot of texture. This side right here has nothing, listen. And this side is... Okay, so there's a lot of difference. And earlier I made sure that you can go back through with the texture. Um, do you remember which brand the texture was? It's way back so long ago. Um, I can find it. Yeah. Anyway, so whatever we used on this video, so you can check that video out. Um, it's super sandable, so watch this. I can knock that texture right back down. Okay, so. If you have a texture in a corner, now it's super quiet. So if you have a texture that you need to smooth in, you can totally use your 60 grit on your sanding block to do the thing. The sanding blocks, guys, if you don't own two, you need two. Um, we do not sell them. You can get them on Amazon. We can link them. Um, a 220 grit, is that 220? I think it's 220. Uh, Steve's the man of the yeah. man of the Steve's hour. Steve's a man that. of the hour. We're talking with Steve a lot today. Hey, Nick, just to throw out to you, buddy. 
<laughs> He's being all quiet. Steve, uh, Nick is super quiet. Okay, 220 on one and 60 on the other. These are the two that I use all day long, every day. Every now and again, I need a thousand grit, something for wet sanding or something, but these two serve me all the time. So if you need two, those are your two. And there is a video on how to load those things. It's a little tricky. Um, we used the Liquitex modeling paste okay. and we actually saw that on our website. Okay. And so I will share the link for that. And it does look like we have some in stock. Nice. Oh, that's nice. And it doesn't look like we have a tube in here. It's okay. a container. Oh, is it in the um, container? It says modeling paste on it. Aha. The one that says modeling paste. The one that, I was the looking, one, there was a tube. The one, <laughs> the one that I labeled. Because of that same, okay, so this is what the product looks like. And then I am gonna go and put my lid on my stick and restick. And we did have another another off. brand that we There was a modeling used. paste was in a tube at one mm -hmm. point, but I don't know if it was the same brand. No, it was not, it was pink. And I'll see if, yeah. um, we used to be able to get that from Amazon. So I'm gonna share the Amazon link. Yeah, Amazon changes all the time. Okay, so how do we glue on texture? So where I was going, and I have a fix on this one, so I'm gonna talk about that. If I was gluing on the texture, I would use a, a goofy glue, something that's gonna make a little bit of a raised pile. The gel glue is gonna be super flat, and it's not going to touch all of the surfaces. I believe that I'm speaking truly, that you have to have contact with your surface for the glue to work. So um, this to me would be what I would use for sticky or for raised. And then you could also E6000 and just use it a little bit heavy. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this one again. And now let's go to Mr. Bunny Trail. Okay, so Bunny Trail has really, this is one that we use the wood, um, the sawdust in. And this is one of the best techniques, you guys. If you have not seen this video, there's a coffee one, there's a bunny one. Um, I feel like there's more, but I can't think of what they are. Anyway, you need to go see that because this looks so rich and so cool. Here's the problem if you wanna add these things after. So I'm gonna show you what they would look like. And where did my other little, he's upside down. Okay, so I have these blank areas, which is why I did this antiquing, right? But now if I add, the little black corners. Man, that's pretty. So elegant. Just frames it so nice. You could go with two corners. You can go with four corners and you could literally just anchor it in one corner and call it a moment. Um, I think that's a really kind of a neat little um, it's almost a little Asian as far as like you have one heavy element and then you have other stuff happening and then you can also flip them around so you can do the long ends on these sides. This became quite a game of Jenga or Lego or whatever. Okay, so you could do it the long way too, going long on the sides instead of up the sides. So now we get into the problem. So I have my 60 grit. This has a big wad of gunk, the um, sawdust gunk, okay? So it sands really well, but watch what happens to my antiquing. Okay, it becomes lighter and then I also kind of got my little edge. I think this will cover the edge problem, but my raised area has a little bit of a like a neon light right there showing through so what you can do take your dome brush and a little bit of black paint same way as we antiqued it before so when you're washing something off when you're distressing something when you're doing any of those things you can always go backwards one step and you can always do the technique that you did before so we're going to give this a big old wipe off really wipe off like 20, 30 times. And then I'm just gonna go tickle the top of that. It's gonna drag it right back in. I'll even give that a little bit of a darkening. So anywhere where you need it, you can go and deepen it and it's going to fix the problem. And now you can glue these on. I would do the same thing with this. I would use hot glue or E6000 so that, and I would put it on 
the biggest areas and then anchor that. I'm going to do some. We had a question mm -hmm. and I'm Go for going it. Get in here. Well, I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> She's not ready for you. I have to do some searching. Okay. So I want to switch to this guy. So we did some foiling and we just filmed a little short on how to apply the leaf onto these corners. So super important to know how to do that. I'm going to steal my corners. Which ones are you using? Um, both eventually, okay. but go ahead. I'm going to stack them. Yep. Yeah. We had a question asking about that. They're super so cool. Show if I can find, if I can find three different sizes of these. I don't know. All right. So we put foil on these guys. And then what's neat about this, not that one, this one. Um, nope. Yes. Doing it wrong. Why yes. am I doing yes. it wrong? Is this the one? Okay. So this is a really neat little effect. It really kind of complements. Can you see that okay? Yep. Um, so it brings the copper up. It gives it a little 3D structure. And it brings that copper into the design on top. I love it. Love that too. And I also love, can we pop that, can we pop that back over here? Yep, sure and can. one of the designs that Elaine did on this, she brought one here and here. And let's see, we go. Let's use our brain this way. <laughs> Sorry, my brain wasn't working there. And You're then upside also down and, backwards. and backwards. And this way oh, that so that you could that do looks really nice. a corner. Yeah. Um, now and then you, you could would, bring it over here too. Yeah. yeah. So do them anchoring. But you Super will have fun. to measure that out. So the question yep. we had received was online. We did show some ways to stack these. So I was trying to find mm, three different ones. So that's fun. those are three. Now there would be another size of the small the, one. The one that would be medium. Yeah, kind that of would sized. stack mm -hmm. there. So you could yes. stack those and paint them. I think the one that we had an example of was a red, white, and blue patriotic yes. one with yeah. the wagon wheel. And it was beautiful. Uh, that That's will be so on our really... Facebook page. But you can stack them to even add more texture. Yeah, and to I it. think I think that you bring up a really good point because now architecturally it becomes more interesting, mm -hmm. you know. And it's especially if they're painted so that they go together. Well, and you know, I love it. We do signs. We do signs every day of our life, and we have signs all around our houses, and we are always looking for ways to not paint a flat sign. Agreed. And so that's why we use the modeling paste. We use the texture with the sawdust. We've started doing the stacked 3D signs and we started doing these. Now we had um, someone commented about spider webs. We have actually had spider webs for a very long Since time. That was the very few, first pew pew gun. Right? Yes. Right with the, it came all in together. And so we've done those. We've showed those um, on the skeleton mm -hmm. tall porch so I can share that video. But we did these ones because we wanted everyday yeah. corners that you can use on any project. Having only snowflakes and spider webs and a scroll um, is, is not okay. We needed we needed the corbel look. Whoever asked the corbel question, I think that's a very valid question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna take out, this is one of my favorite projects. Um, you Are My Sunshine is a song I think my mom must have sang to me forever and ever and ever ago. You but ever yeah, mm -hmm. and it was one of the first gifts that I gave my husband when we were dating. I had a little music box and it was You Are My Sunshine. I'm gonna cry a little bit. <sighs> so sweet, I'm such a good wife. Anyway, so. <laughs> Anyway, I, that's probably why you married me is because I gave him a music box. You guys, are, you are, you guys are both catches. <laughs> so let me tell a funny story. Patty and Ted went camping over the weekend and went fishing. And Patty posted a picture of Ted holding a bobber because a bobber <laughs> he did not catch anything. And he did not. <laughs> I may or may not have been fishing myself and said He's the best catch. He didn't need to catch anything. He's all the catch you need. I know, he was the best catch. It was catch. just funny. He caught a bobber. Um, okay, so you are my sunshine. Now this is super grungy and super, like I love anything chipped up and like grungy. I just love that. Okay, so I started with a yellow. Well, very obviously my yellow was mixed here. This is way back in the way back machine. COVID, so 21, so two years ago. Blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, so I probably mix a really bright yellow with this other yellow. And I could have mixed and played, but I wanted to keep it simple. And so 
when I put that up there, I was like, okay, I like that, but I don't love that. Mm -hmm. And it's also super static. It's super, I don't know, structured and all of that kind of thing. So. Well, and it's funny how the, the static black looks mm -hmm. so good on that bunny trail. Yeah. But the static yellow is just like, mm -hmm. nee. Yeah, no, I agree. So I went ahead and I distressed them. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that on there, yeah, that it totally there, changes it. It totally makes it better. And then when you do the alternate, that's one of the things, those of you who have the balanced life where you've, like structure is mm -hmm. important, this will probably make you nuts, but that's why you can do four. Right, well, and we do have some examples that will show that the stencil that was chosen is very bottom heavy, where there's, yeah. um, there's a farm one that I'm thinking about mm -hmm. that's white, and it was painted and it starts with a little bit and then it grows. And so the corners are only in the top yeah. and it really just brought it together. Balances and it up. Four yeah. of them wouldn't have worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so with this one, four work, I think two work. Um, I don't know if I agree that one works. Um, I don't have the appropriate, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. That's super fun to bring that down the mm -hmm. side. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it takes up a little more space. Yeah. Take your weathering in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, and so thank you for saying that, Steve, because that is something I wanted to point out. So we talked about this, I believe it was last week, where you always keep your line going yes. in the same direction. Do not sand this way if you have distressing this way. You always do the same way. If you bring another line in, your eye is going to get confused. And so I feel like there's so much basics in this. Yeah, agree. You guys, please share this if you feel like it will help somebody else or a group that you belong to or any of that so that we can help other people with all these basic um, tools. So let's talk about how you would distress a corner because I think that's super important. I hope you are loving this. If you love it, give us a thumbs up. Um, so... We are going to, let's see, this guy is going up and down. This guy is going up and down. So we're this way and this way. Those are going to be our alternate corners. So we're going to take our white. Oh, I already have my white out. Go ahead and put another mile of white out just because that might not be enough. I frustrated myself today with that. It was like, why are you putting all this paint out? Okay, the first thing you want to do, 60 grit with the sanding block. Um, you can use... The bin of sanding block refuse and you can do the thing where you fold it up and you can do the sanding like that what i don't like about that is every one of these edges catches and makes a line and so you don't get to control your lines so i have these i have a whole bucket of them rarely use them but they are handy to have sometimes so i do keep them love the sanding block i've um, been using the sanding block for Easily 30 years, um, easily. So we're gonna hold on to this. When you get into these thinner ones, you can see they're not very flexible, but if I tried, I could go pop and I could break this. So you want to not try to break it. So you wanna treat them respectfully. The thicker ones, you wouldn't have any problem with. Um, the thinner ones, especially delicate ones. Well, most of these are not really delicate. Um, I do spend quite a bit of time popping things when they bring prototypes to me. I try to break them so that lots I can. Lots of broken hearts. Lots of broken hearts. I mean, lots. you wouldn't believe. Laser operators mm -hmm, um, I get really sad when I just go pop, pop, <laughs> pop. And then we're like, okay, back to the drawing board. Let's go make them beefier. Okay, so you're going to sand. You're going to hold this down. You're going to sand it to get rid of a little bit of the color. We don't want it to be so new looking. As soon as I start losing control because I'm on a, a skinnier edge I'll turn it over and then I'll give it some more scuffing just really hang on to it wipe that off okay and then you can go into your brush and you could use white first or black first and we want to pat this off so we'll come onto our paper towel and then we'll just flick. So when you flick, it's gonna be the little flick like you sweep off the edge of your um, porch. Like you're out there with your broom and you go flip right there just to get that dirt to fly off. 
that's what we're doing here, but we're pulling it towards us. So I just want to do that sweeping movement and I'll just go across the top and then I'm going to flip it over, reload, re-wipe off, and then flip him over. And then we'll go across everything. So see how that's changing that look right there? Well, in the design of the embellishment, kind of self antiques. It does kind of, doesn't it? Because there are that different edge parts mm -hmm. where you hit that edge and yeah. then it's going to go ahead and pull a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. So now on top of this, it's dry already because I used just a little bit of paint. I'm just going to go and I'm going to add black. You could add brown. You could add whatever colors you wanted. The lines are important. You want to make sure your lines stay consistent. And if you jack something up and you don't like where your lines went or they went curved or anything like that, um, you can go back and give it a little sand and straighten stuff out. So now we can put that up there in that other corner. Okay, and so now I really do like that together like that. It's yeah. just a lovely look. Agreed. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to, do I have? Um, now, I have one more. Wait, wait, we wanna okay. talk about one thing with this. Okay. So we were talking about, with this one, we mm -hmm. used multiple colors to make the sunshine, yep. and we did have some ideas that we wanted to share with you on keeping track of what you're painting. Oh, so, I really like this one. Yeah, yeah. so um, Patty brought her, she has, we, mm -hmm. we both use, so there's two tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one is going to be your camera on your phone. Um, when you get done painting something, you can take a picture of your paints, mm -hmm. take a picture of your project, and take a picture of your palette. Well, three tools. Yes. Asana is one. Yes. It's A-S-A-N-A. -A. Yeah, and it's a program that we use for organization at work. Yeah. And we have all of our videos posted there and with our videos we take pictures of the finished project so that we always have mm -hmm. it and we can always see it we make notes on what color paint we used if we mixed we have colors yeah um, if we had embellishments what size the stencil is so then that's something that you, you that's a tool that we use every day that makes our jobs in life easier for yeah. organization um, but we also, you can use a notebook. We're big notebook people. So on, <laughs> on the notebook. So I have a notebook that I use for like my prayer journaling. I have a notebook that I use for my work stuff. And these are the dot um, journals. Mm -hmm. And I, um, even when my grandson is visiting um, and we color together and doodle <laughs> together, I have that. But I love that I have all of that in this year's journal. So I know if I'm looking for, I had to learn a whole vocabulary terminology when I was buying a new laser that was super like high speed or whatever. I had to learn, I'm trying to even think what the vocabulary word is now. It's in my journal from two years ago um, because I didn't know how to remember it. And so I had to write it down and then I could go to that journal. I could dig through those pages, date your pages mm -hmm. so that you can go through here and be like, oh, this is going to be... 2019 or whatever it is, um, give yourself a clue. Well, and if you are selling, um, what we have run into over at um, Boardroom 46 is that there will be a picture on the wall or a project yep. that we painted. Like this would like be a this good one, example. And someone will come in and say, I want that exact same thing, same colors, same background. And so if you're not taking notes yes. of how you did it, especially if you are selling and you're doing um, things. Now, there was a time when we weren't selling very mm -hmm. often. We weren't selling off the walls and we would rush right on the back in Sharpie marker yeah. what yeah. we were doing. Probably wouldn't even remember that that one was dirty cat weight. This was dirty cat mm -hmm. weight. This one I used to do um, with wood ash and rubbed it in. If yeah. you wanna see how to antique like this or um, do the distressing and the dirty cowboy trick, <laughs> that's, that's that right it's there. amazing yeah. yeah and this one in the always stay humble and kind mm -hmm. in the very back corner um was a, also one it's a cool technique yeah, i will share that um, yeah yeah so but anyway yes yeah, so you want to take a couple pictures take you know we got like kind of unlimited so take the pictures and then if you have a digital place 
we do love a sauna because you can name it you are my sunshine my only sunshine mm -hmm. and then you can search by it and then if you're like oh i want to remember what i did for that technique did i use weathered wood mm -hmm. did i use liquitex antiquing medium yep. did like whatever i used will be in your picture of your tool deck and then you'll be like, oh, that's what I used. I remember now. Well, and jump. So I had actually used a sauna personally before I even started working here. And a lot of us have a personal Asana account yeah. that we have all of our gardening stuff in. I take pictures to time, like show. This is the day I planted it. This is what it looked two weeks later. She's this way is way more organized. Than me. <laughs> but you can use it for any type of organization. Like Christmas lists for yeah. year after year. Your or... um, special Christmas lists where you want to keep like I bought this. I didn't do this. You can keep a private task and you can have a public mm -hmm. yep. task. And so everything can be this public or private. Um, you can share it or not share it. You can. There's so much you can do with yeah. it. It is really cool. And I think the. Private user accounts are super, um, they're either free or cheap, like a there couple bucks. Yeah, yeah, there's a free, and I have just used the free version. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, we all used, I think, the free mm -hmm. or the really cheap for here for a long time, and we're at a medium level now because of how many people, but, um, you know, it's an amazing program. Yeah. All right, so I have one more, and then we are going to be done. If you guys have questions, hop on now so we can get them answered. We want to be here to answer your questions. Um, make sure that you subscribe so that you can find us again. If you're new, let us know. We're so happy that you're here. All right, one more. There we are. Thank you. Okay, this is in the poplar tall porch signs. Guys, um, poplar's great wood. This thing weighs double what a pine board weighs. It also um, warps. Um, I don't think it was planed um, from the where we got it from and stuff like that, but it is, um, it's a good wood. This is very heavy, so we're gonna put this guy. It's a four foot tall porch sign, and it's not four porch, it's for you unless you have a laundry business, in which case, good luck. Um, but, we chose these in gray, and I'm gonna show you that this is a very distressed sign. So we could go, ooh, I think this way. Nice. And then this way. So we can put it either way. I know, I know. So that's what that looks like overhead. But I don't like it because these aren't distressed like this. So what I can do is 60 grit. I can decide I'm gonna go that way. I just cut a case of the hiccup, sorry. Let's give it some sanding. And I'm gonna tip my sanding block over to the side to give it some center sanding. You want to do some edge sanding. So that's going to get that little bit on those edges done. It's going to catch. It's amazing. So now I'm going to go away, trying not to knock over the camera equipment. Can you see okay, Nick? Yep. Okay. And so now that's so much better. It sets down in there and I could even take some black and give it just a little bit of distressing. So all of these tools that you've been learning from us with the distressing, the sanding, the antiquing, all of that, they're useful across all of the projects that you're gonna do. All right, so now we can go there. And now that very much fits the temperature and the mood of the piece. So remember that when you're doing something super crisp, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep that clean. And then when you're doing something super distressed, you wanna keep that mood and keep it in that same family of technique. Do we have any last questions? I don't think so. I think Whew, we, might, we might have a couple that we'll answer after we're yeah. finished, but. I love these corners. I hope that you guys love them too. And we'll see you on the next video.